I'd like to take a moment and recognize Gary Joyce for his dedicated service to this organization, our members, and the industry. We're certainly going to miss having him at the helm. Uh, Gary saw some of our members and the industry through some of our most challenging times, frankly, and, and he did it with very limited access and travel to the States. We've had our share of video conferences over the last couple of years, and frankly, I'm ready to see you in person. We're glad to have you here. Gary and I, I, I can't thank you enough. Your commitment uh, to the membership, to the industry, and the staff throughout your term as chairman. Um, I look forward to your continued involvement, support of the industry and the association as you pass the gavel to our next chairman. Again, thank you. Welcome to New Orleans and AEA 2022. We're back in the big easy. Uh, and it, it certainly hasn't been easy for this city over the last few months, but we're here. Um, we're ready to move on with the restrictions lifted. We're ready to get on with our show. And what a great week we have planned for you. We have uh, nearly a sold-out exhibit hall. We have nearly 100 hours of training and a jam-packed schedule, also starting with our legendary first night our event this evening. On behalf of the uh, dedicated directors of the AEA staff and board, I would like to officially welcome you and say thank you for being here to support this resilient industry. Also, a special thanks to our convention uh, exhibitors and our sponsors. Your attendance and support helped make this the premier event for aircraft electronics professionals. I'd also like to personally welcome all of our international attendees who made it through all kinds of challenges to be here this week. Uh, we missed you in Dallas, and we are so glad to have you back. We're excited to announce that we have more than 120 exhibitors 250 shops from about 15 different countries here this week. Uh, and this morning we'll have nearly 30 new product introductions. And this afternoon we'll kick off our training, as I said, with nearly 100 hours of regulatory, business, and technical training. It's already been nine months since we met in Dallas. Uh, a lot has changed in that time, presenting a lot of opportunities and a lot of challenges. The health of the general aviation industry can be described as resilient. We've seen significant improvement in flight activity, specifically business aviation is up 40% year over year. And even before some of the supply chain issues, uh, where shops were growing their backlogs and nearly 80% reported that they're ready to hire now or certainly before the end of the year. Not everything is blue skies though. Inflationary pressures and geopolitical tensions are creating headwinds that will impact installers and manufacturers who are already dealing with constraints in their supply chain. On top of all that, we still need qualified technicians. Still, the industry and the association has fared pretty well through all of this, and there are some positive signs out there for post-COVID recovery. The AEA's avionics market report helps tell the story. Coming out of 2020, we saw a 26% decrease in our year-over-year -year sales numbers. However, we started to chip away at that decline, and we're up back 6.5% at the end of 2021 and that followed six consecutive quarters of sales growth. Our report breaks down avionics sales by region and market for 21 different manufacturers, and it showed slight increases in retrofit sales and nearly a 10% increase in forward fit sales. Last year ended with 1.29 billion in retrofit and nearly 1.1 billion in forward fit. The jump in forward fit numbers coincides with the positive news from our friends over at the General Aviation Manufacturers Association where airplane and rotorcraft manufacturers reported increased shipments across all aircraft types, more than 9% for fixed wing and 25% for helicopter. And the billings for those shipments are up nearly 10%. Now that's when compared to 2020. A signal that there is some improvement, uh, certainly in the, in the industry, even with turbulence in the supply chain. As we close out the first quarter in these next few days, we'll closely monitor the situation in Europe and see how that impacts our global aviation market. Business is anything but, un but usual these days. Uh, as many of you know, especially those who own your own business, you've got to make tactical decisions for your day-to-day -day operations and strategic decisions for your future. Now, this goes for any type of business, including trade associations. The AEA has spent the last two years on making a lot of tactical decisions because of the pandemic. But while that was going on, we are meeting with a special strategic planning committee outlining the focus for the next five to seven years for the association. And today I'm happy to announce the AEA Board of Directors and the Strategic Planning Committee recently wrapped up their work on this new plan. In addition to identifying our key goals and strategies, our focus produced 
a new mission and vision for the AEA. As you may have seen in our opening video, from life-saving technologies to connectivity solutions that shrink the world, we are the innovators and integrators that power safer and more efficient flight. Since our inception in 1957, we've helped bring these products to market while promoting your business. How we go about this through education, communication, and advocacy is where we've really grown over the years. These guiding principles are why you're here this week, and they're the pillars of this association for the last 65 years. Before my time, and certainly my nearly two decades of service to the AEA, we've been focused on education. We've been relentless bringing high quality, relevant industry training to our members. We've helped establish an industry certification for aircraft electronics technicians, and the first ever recognition for those technicians from the FAA. We also built the framework for a Department of Labor approved apprentice program, also with recognition from the FAA. We've trained tirelessly on the regulations to help members better understand repair station compliance and operate more efficiently within those guidelines. Going forward, we'll expand our efforts, and in the classroom, we'll plant more seeds for the next generation and for our future leaders. You know, they say good communication is the bridge between clarity and confusion. The AEA prides itself on being the voice of the aircraft electronics industry and through avionics news, the pilot's guide, our social media services and our website, we are the link to the newsmakers in the industry. We dive deep into the relationships in the marketplace and bring those stories and the best practices of our members to light. Our advocacy can be defined in multiple ways. As a small business ally, AEA's advocacy starts with our maintenance organizations and our manufacturers. We support legislative and regulatory action that favors small business. We maximize our relationships on the Hill so that we can focus on what impacts your business. We've counseled hundreds of existing and startup repair stations over the years, and we've learned more best practices with each new member. And after 65 years, we still have more work to do. Our new strategic plan addresses that, with goals focused primarily on workforce development, membership, and growth. Over the next five years, AEA has a new roadmap to follow uh, that will increase the awareness and attractiveness of careers in the aircraft electronics industry. More specifically, we'll work to inspire future generations at an earlier age, engage them in aviation curriculum, and inform them about careers in aircraft electronics. We'll further de develop the knowledge, skills, and abilities of our current generation, and we'll prepare for tomorrow's technologies like UAS and advanced air mobility. We'll also prospect for talent in adjacent technical industries and the military to bring hardworking, trainable professionals to our industry. We'll expand our reach, ensuring we continue to serve our current members in the market while welcoming new companies who fit our vision. And finally, we'll nurture the long-standing relationships that are the foundation of this association, the dealer OEM connection. My thanks to the board of directors, the strategic planning committee, as well as our members who participated in surveys and provided feedback for this direction for this very important process. As we work towards our goals and implement these strategies, I'll be looking for your feedback and insights. During the show this week, while you're taking advantage of everything we have to offer, be sure to share your thoughts and suggestions with the board, the staff, and myself as we continue to grow this impressive organization. Aero News Network's coverage of the 65th Annual AEA International Convention and Trade Show, live from New Orleans, is brought to you in part by the following sponsors.